my channel and welcome to a brand new vlog. I am so excited about this vlog because I feel like I'm going to be getting you guys out of my house and out of Windsor, which I think is very much needed. I think we need to spice these vlogs up a bit and I have a lot of really fun plans to make sure I do that for you guys. So I'm really pumped about today. Um, it is Tuesday and this week in London is the Chelsea Flower Show. This is actually one of my favorite weeks of the year because subsequently or alongside the Chelsea Flower Show, there's an event or there are two events called Chelsea in Bloom and Belgravia in Bloom. And this is basically like a free to attend floral display festival, <laughs> basically like storefronts all throughout Chelsea get involved and they put together these beautiful floral displays and there's voting and awards and it's just a really really fun um, time to walk around the neighborhood that's already beautiful but if you love flowers and you love seeing creatives at work and um, and yeah have an appreciation for nature it's incredible so today I'm going to be meeting up with Victoria for a nice little catch up and walk around we only have a little bit of time um, in which we'll be together. So I'm thinking that we're going to be walking around Belgravia in Bloom, which is basically, um, it's always put on in partnership with a charity and then the charity and Bel like the Belgravia, like I don't know exactly how to say it, but anyway, there's always a theme that is chosen that um, kind of supports the mission of the charity. And this year, the charity that is helping to put on Belgravia in Bloom is the London Wildlife Trust, whose mission is to get Londoners out in nature more and appreciate our furry friends more. And so there are a lot of floral displays that are kind of focused on animals and nature. And then in addition to that, in Belgravia, there are restaurants and stores that are kind of putting on little workshops or creating a like specific menu or festive cocktails that kind of go alongside the Belgravia and Bloom theme. So it should be fun to walk around today and show you guys all the displays. And then I'm hoping later this week to actually um, head over to the Chelsea side and see all the floral displays in Chelsea because I don't think I'm gonna have enough time to see the Chelsea and Bloom displays, but there are going to be a lot of good ones. I was kind of taking a little peek yesterday on Instagram. It just looks amazing. So I'm really excited for later this week. I believe I'm going on Thursday. And then in addition to walking around Chelsea, I'm also going to be popping into the actual Chelsea flower show, which I've never done before, but I've always kind of found it really interesting. So it's put on by the Royal Horticulture Society, and it's basically a huge event that celebrates all things floral, botanical, horticultural, horticultural, I always struggle with that word a bit. <laughs> and anyone who has a massive interest in those things um, really finds this event to be incredibly um, helpful as well as inspirational. And I wouldn't say that I'm like a huge gardener by any means, but I am somebody who appreciates inspiration and somebody who is very, very much looking forward to when myself and John can buy a home and create a home that feels very um, peaceful and cozy and that's not just inside the home but outside as well. And to be fair, something that I really appreciate about this country and the culture here is how focused it is on nature and the importance of getting outside and going for a walk and getting fresh air in your lungs and being amongst nature. It There's research that proves that it's so good for you. So yeah, I think that's my draw to, um, to wanting to check it out. I've always wanted to check it out, but just I haven't for one reason or another. So I think my friend Molly and I are gonna check that out on Thursday. So yeah, all that to say, it's gonna be a really fun week. Don't worry, style and fashion is going to be incorporated as well. I need to get dressed. This is not what I'm wearing today. I have a really beautiful top that I cannot wait to wear. Um, so I'll show that to you in a little bit, but I wanted to quickly unbox a new arrival. I just got a package in from Matches Fashion. I just snagged this dress that I was like lusting over, drooling over, but I, I honestly did not think that it would ever become a part of my wardrobe, but it was 30% off. So um, let's unbox that, and then I need to film the H&M try-on that you will have hopefully already seen. So anyway, let's unbox this. All right, hi. <laughs> put you guys on a tripod. All right, are we ready? I'm gonna put some try-on clips over the top of this so you can see how this fits, but 
This is the latest addition to my dress collection. It is a beautiful dress by Zimmerman with this beautiful like collar, deep neckline, puff sleeves with a fitted pearl detail behind um, at the back, and then a beautiful, very full A-line skirt. And the colors are just absolutely gorgeous. They are um, full of like lavenders and blues and pinks and corals and a little, little, little bit of yellow, but not too much. I'm not a huge, huge fan of yellow, but I just think that all of the colors really work well together. And I didn't realize this when I first bought it, but when I was inspecting it, when I opened it, I realized that there are so many nods to astrology. Like on the back here, there are these little um, astrology wheels or zodiac wheels. And then along the collar here are, they're called glyphs, but they're, that's another word for symbols. And it's essentially all of the zodiac sign symbols. So like Leo and Taurus, Aries, Pisces, all of them are there. And yeah, there's also like maps all over it. So I feel like in so many ways it embraces so many things that I have an interest in, like travel and, you know, kind of like, I don't know, I feel like I'm a very like open-minded and kind of like, mis I like, I'm a Pisces, so I like, like things that are a bit like mystical and out there and I kind of like to kind of be free. So there's lots of water and like, I have a lot of Sagittarian um, uh, placements in my chart as well, so like the fact that there's the world and ships and like going out and like seeing the world I'm just like this dress in so many ways is made for me so I am very excited about this new addition obviously quite a pricey addition to my dress wardrobe I recently shared a reel on my Instagram with five dresses under I think it was under a hundred so I've always kind of done like high and low so I realized that this is quite expensive and that it's not gonna be within everybody's budget but I'm just here to share what I like and if I find anything that's similar that is a very similar silhouette that's way more affordable, I will absolutely let you guys know. Um, but now I need to get my butt in gear and get to filming the H&M try on and then I will catch you guys when I have gotten myself ready to head out for Belgravia in bloom. All right, I am not done with the H&M try on haul video unfortunately, but I filmed half of it and then I will film the other half tomorrow. Um, I believe, I believe my um, video editor will be able to kind of accommodate a super last minute um, end to that video. But anyways, um, this is what I'm wearing today. It is a really pretty Zimmerman top that I got um, when I was visiting the States um, in January that I just have not pulled out. And I just thought it, perfect for the Chelsea Flower Show and it's some really pretty like vivid um, like blues and purples and peaches and yeah it's these really pretty floral buttons here that are just gorgeous and then these culottes are tried and true I bought them in 2014 so I've almost had them for 10 years and I absolutely love them then my Sam Edelman loafers for comfort to get up to London and then I've got my Valentino rock studs to change into. I am two minutes late in leaving so I need to let you go now. We'll see you in London. one of our, I feel like, how many times have we done this together? Like four or five times or something. I know. I was saying in like the intro clip, like how this is always like one of my favorite weeks of the year, even though I've never actually been to like the actual Chelsea Flower Show. You have like, to do it once. Yeah. I think I'm gonna try and go Thursday. Ooh. In the afternoon okay. with um, Molly and I are gonna, I think, try try our luck at getting uh, some of the discount tickets. <laughs> We'll see, we'll see. Oh um, but anyways, we are just doing a little walk around. We've been walking for a while now. I might get myself a little coffee, but we just stopped outside of Neil Strain, which is so beautiful right now. So 
we are just walking around Belgravia and then I think we are going to try to squeeze in a little bit of the Chelsea and Bloom um, before we have to part ways. But anyway, we will bring you guys along on what we see. Okay, so it's about an hour later and I'm now in a black cab on the way back to the train station. I unfortunately had to make a bit of a quick exit um, from Victoria. We actually parted ways at the around the time that we had planned to go our separate ways, um, but um, I was going to kind of set up shop in a coffee shop for about an hour and get some work done. I had a call with um, my assistant and um, I had to cancel because Louie unfortunately is unwell, so I've got to get back um, over to Windsor so that John and I can kind of split the load. Thankfully, he was not far and um, was able to go and pick him up. So heading to Paddington now to get the train back to Windsor. And um, yeah, overall, we had such a nice time. So um, we were able to kind of go through most of mostly like Belgravia in bloom. We didn't really get to go through um, the Chelsea in bloom um, installations, but hopefully on Thursday when I head back into London, I can um, go into the city a little bit early because I think me and Molly are going to meet up later in the day to go into um, the Chelsea Flower Show. Um, so I'm going to try and get to the city a little bit early so I can um, see what I wasn't able to see today but me and Victoria had such a lovely catch-up um, you might know I'm not sure um, how closely you follow but Victoria and I met in 2016 when I was living in London for um, just like a six-month period and her and I become such great friends um, like she's one of my closest girlfriends um, especially here and she just became a mom for the first time she just had a little girl in um, in March so it's been such a special time to kind of watch her enter into this new season and um, yeah see her embrace it and just do so great at it so anyways her in-laws are in town so they were able to watch her daughter for a bit while she got some fresh air and um, saw the installations with me and had a nice little catch-up so anyway like I was saying I'm off home now but I will catch up with you guys in a bit hi guys it's now a few hours later, John is on um, a call, and I just put Louie down. It's 7.45, still bright and sunny out, which I love. And now I need to put some hours in at the computer. Um, I think I am going to be posting a reel. Um, I sent over some clips that I took while I was in London today, and my assistant just sent over um, that for review and well I'm just so grateful to have her on the team now I've got um, I've got two like virtual assistants that help me with different types of content and I feel like I've got some of my bases covered now that really needed to be covered um, I've had like the blog and the newsletter covered for a while like help with LTK um, and now I've got somebody just helping with like ideas and um, real production, <laughs> audio help, and um, yeah, just like help with a lot of other like content things. And I just feel like I'm so grateful because I've really been enjoying putting my time, effort, and energy into filming um, for YouTube. And um, I have so many like ideas and um, and I want to get like more connected in London, like going to exhibits and um, and events and getting in touch with PRs and things like that that I just I wanted to do for so long, but I just have not either felt like I had the capacity because we were moving or we didn't have childcare help, um, and then also you know kind of because of the depression that I was really just just really struggling mentally and it's just being on this medication has been 
I said today to my dad's um, fiance, I was like, I don't know if I told you that he got engaged. I can't remember if I put that in a vlog, but he's engaged and he's very happy. So I was talking to my dad's fiance and she was um, like, you are just exuding such beautiful, like light, positive energy and I'm so happy for you. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I honestly feel like I've come home to myself and I'm so, so grateful. I'm so, so grateful. So I just feel like I have like, I've got my drive back. I've got like me back. So I am so excited to kind of put a lot of my time and effort and energy into um, obviously like reviewing all of the content that we're putting out on my blog and on Instagram and on LTK. All of those are linked down below if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. But I'm having so much fun also kind of brainstorming what I want to do here on YouTube. And this is like only the beginning, you guys. I hope that you um, have enjoyed the vlogs, but there is going to be a lot more coming your way just you wait. I've been really enjoying the book Manifest by Roxy Nafusi that I told you guys about. Um, I'm about a quarter of the way through. <laughs> I've had a lot that I've been juggling, but I've been really loving it so far. I listened to a couple of podcast um, episodes with her and she is amazing. Yeah, I think I'm going to say good night, good evening, and thank you guys for joining me today. And let's get up to some more fun later in the week. I'll catch you guys probably on Thursday. Hi guys, it is now Thursday. Didn't film anything yesterday because I just didn't feel, feel as though it was like worth filming. I was just, I was doing a lot of filming for the YouTube channel, but then also some computer work and a call with my life coach Jackie. Um, so that was really great. She does um, a lot of like parts work um, or what is it called? Internal family systems. And it's a way of like kind of figuring out um, what parts of you are like driving your bus and keeping you from like um, just kind of blocking you from having the relationships that you want or the life you want and it's just so in insightful and helpful so anyway that was a great conversation yesterday but um, but yeah now I am walking to the train station because we are heading into London again today gonna meet my friend Molly and we are going to walk around Chelsea and Bloom, which will be really lovely. Um, I think we're gonna try and pop over to this event where the founder of Hill House dresses, like the nap dresses, um, is making an appearance because um, Hill House is launching in the UK. And then we are gonna pop into Chelsea Flower Show as well. So it'll be a very nice and lovely day just kind of seeing what is going on in the neighborhood. So yeah, bringing you guys along and I'll see you in London. Look who I found! This is Molly. Her and I, we've been friends for like like five years now. Yeah, at least. Yeah. So Molly works for Bailey and Sage, which is the most like beautiful grocery store in London basically. And she runs her social media and she's originally from the States as well. So another American in London. Yes. Anyway, we just enjoyed a nice little um, break from the crowds and all of the beautiful flowers and 
pop-ups and had a nice little ketchup over some rosé and champagne. And Molly is a veteran Chelsea Flower Show goer. So she she's showing your girl the ropes. I love a bit of gardening. Oh yeah. So this is my uh, Mecca. This is my Glastonbury. <laughs> this is, and you also love Glastonbury, I don't you? I also love Glastonbury, <laughs> yes. But this is my more wholesome version More wholesome, of yes. <laughs> so Molly's showing me all of, all of the best spots and um, it is way busier than I ever expected. It is mental. But it's amazing. It's so, so cool. I've gotten myself um, some dahlias from Dahlia Beach. I'll be showing the, those to you another time. Fingers crossed they grow. Fingers crossed they grow because your girl is, you know, still learning. All right, Molly and I have had a great time, but the crowds are pretty intense, so I'm, I'm pretty sure this calls for maybe like a second glass of like something. I mean, it's the official rosé of the RHS Chelsea Flower Show, so, so you can only get it here. I mean, I've heard amazing things about the newt, so I think, I think it has to happen. I think we should. guys oh my goodness <laughs> that was a whirlwind I'm not gonna lie I <laughs> I don't know what I had in my mind that this whole Chelsea flower show event was gonna be like but wow there were so many more people than I thought there were gonna be I need to figure out which way I turn I think I go that way um, but it was incredible it was really really fun it was really cool to kind of see a lot of the beautiful flower vendors and garden inspiration and um, you know outdoor living vendors and yeah overall it was a really really nice time is that another hog and coffee they are literally everywhere now anyway I'll have to tell you about that in a minute but anyways I split ways for Molly because I wanted to quickly make a stop before I heading to the train station. I wanted to go to a shop called Bonadilla. They are doing a, um, a pop-up this week with a jewelry designer named Nicola Bathy. I follow her on Instagram. She is, well, she's American. They're based in Texas, but I believe she has UK roots. I think one of her parents is from the UK. Um, so she comes back here <laughs> quite often. And anyway, her jewelry is beautiful. And last year they had a pop-up um, with her at this shop and I wasn't able to make it. So this year I saw that they were doing it again. So I wanted to make sure to stop in if I could. So I left a little bit early so that I could make it in, shop around before heading back to Windsor. So let's go check it out. Just like that, I am back in Windsor. I thought I would just quickly share today's outfit, um, being that it was way busier in the flower show than I realized, and there was really no getting any sort of like little clips of me walking around or showcasing my outfit, absolutely not. <laughs> so anyways, I opted for um, this really cute Abercrombie dress that I recently shared in a previous vlog, um, just a really classic silhouette. I love the little um, kind of like, I don't know, looks like frosting to me detail here at the top. Um, looks like it's been like wrapped and it's just really pretty, um, the A-line, midi length bodice is um, just really um, perfect. It's lined and not see-through in the slightest. There's pockets. I decided to smarten up the look a little bit with this blazer. It's quite chilly here in the in the mornings and evenings um, still even though it's quite warm during the day. Just felt like I needed something over my shoulders. I know I've just been really liking blazers lately. I decided to opt for uh, my 
white Gucci mules um, to kind of complete this look, but I think it could easily be um, taken to the next level and dressed up a bit with a um, really nice kind of like thin brown belt and um, brown heeled sandals. So I will style that up, I'm sure, at some point um, coming up, but overall this is a great, um, both of these pieces are really great kind of like hardworking essentials in um, anyone's wardrobe. So they're, they're linked down below as always, and I will catch you guys tomorrow. I'm going to go hang out with Louie now and um, get into some comfy clothes, but I did get a couple things today, so I will show those to you tomorrow. As you can see, it is now the next day. I took you guys along with me this morning to go to my Pilates class. Uh, I can get an Uber, um, but it takes me about a half an hour to just walk, so I usually just drop Louie off and head over there, walk through Windsor, and then over into Eaton. Um, and my Pilates instructor is actually from the States as well. I didn't know that when I like found her and, and ended up booking her, but um, she's lived here for years, um, and so we, you know, have just the best time um, every time I, I do a session with her, and she is so good. She does, like, traditional Pilates, and today I really needed, like, a good stretch, so we really focused on stretching out um, my hips and my hamstrings. I was just so, so tight. She's always, like, really surprised at how um, I'm usually quite flexible, but today I was so tight so anyways it was a really really great session and yeah excited to share um, a little bit from yesterday with you guys so as you saw um, me and Molly had a lovely time walking around Chelsea flower show I feel like I really only scratched the surface um, of all there is to really take in from the event truly there is so much there and I feel like there's so much about the people within that industry that I just, I don't know. But when I do read like little bits and, and things from Instagram, like different people's posts that I've seen online and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so interesting. I've never heard of them or I don't know. Like for example, yesterday Molly was saying hi to one of the vendors. Um, so when you walk in, there's a ton of different stalls um, and they're all different like shop owners, like artists and um, like you know flower farmers and um, I mean just every everything that you can imagine there are like little stalls of, of people um, who run businesses and so one of the stalls when we first walked in was um, this woman named Andy and she runs a dahlia farm in Oxfordshire which is so beautiful and um, Molly had met her uh, previously at another Chelsea flower show I guess and they were they follow each other on Instagram and so anyway we went over and said hello and we we're um, Molly was catching up with her and I was kind of becoming oriented to what she does and I was just really inspired by her because she like her business that she had started previously like went into liquidation and then she just kind of risked it all to start this Dahlia farm and it's called Dahlia Beach and I just couldn't help but be completely persuaded by her because she was so passionate and I was telling her how I love dahlias but I I wasn't able to keep my dahlias alive last year and I was really bummed because I just yeah I think they're so beautiful so she and I had also said that John really limited me this year to only only like five 
the, you know, plants or flowers, and she was like, only five? So she was like, well, you know, my, uh, the collections that we're selling have five um, types of dahlias in them. And I'm like, well, it seems like I meant to use up my five for you, one of your collections. So anyways, and I've already bought a few flowers as, as you guys know from previous vlogs, but I couldn't help but want to support her um, cause she's just so cute and she's so passionate and, um, I started following her on Instagram. I'll link her Instagram down below. And I didn't realize actually, um, I was like looking at her Instagram and she won, um, like a huge award last year at Chelsea in blue or at the Chelsea flower show. And, um, it was just kind of like commemorate like how hard she's worked and like what she's done uh, for her farm and it was just really inspiring and so cool. It it was honestly something that I feel like I'm being taught right now in my own life that right now there are a lot of things that feel very uncertain and very scary but you can't operate out of fear. You really have to just believe that it can all work out and it can all end up being this like beautiful success and that you deserve that and so I feel like this was like a really big encouragement to me me. and so anyways all that to say I have some beautiful dahlias to plant and I'm so excited this is the collection that I ended up going with um, I'll also link her website down below because I'm pretty sure you could probably order some from um, from them and then they also run um, like you can go to their dahlia farm and check it out so if you are planning a trip um, Part of the Cotswolds is in Oxfordshire, so if you're planning to go to the Cotswolds, that could be a really fun, um, you know, day out. I'm not exactly sure where in Oxfordshire um, they are located, so I'm not sure how far it is from the Cotswolds. But just an idea, you guys are always asking me what do I do um, outside of London, and I think that's a really great, kind of unconventional idea, especially if you love flowers like myself. So overall, it was just a really lovely day at the Chelsea Flower Show, and I just, I want to go again next year, and... I don't really know what the secret is to going um, and it not being wildly crazy. I, I told Molly, I was like, maybe next year I can like spend the night at your house the night before we go and we can try and get there like when it opens because it was just so busy and I feel like it's really hard to really take in and see everything that you might want to um, when you're kind of like you're kind of in people's way and they're in your way and it's just really crowded but it was a really great experience overall and i really look forward to um, potentially going again next year um another thing that i did yesterday um before i went back to windsor i was like i definitely want to stop at this um shop called bonadilla i think that they're like a luxury home brands shop i could be completely wrong about that but it was a absolutely stunning shop it was literally like right around the corner from the chelsea flower show so i was like i'm gonna quickly pop in um because they are doing a nicola bathy jewelry pop-up and nicola bathy is a jewelry designer um based in uh i almost said austin texas but she's actually based in san antonio um and i think i found her through one of my girlfriends within the influencer space that's also based in texas it was probably katie mcfarland i'm not gonna lie um and uh, I just love her jewelry designs. I'm pretty sure I found her about a year, maybe a little bit more than a year ago, and I knew she did a pop-up this time last year at Bonadilla, but I couldn't make it. So I was like determined to make it happen this year, and as you saw from the footage, it was just a really lovely pop-up in a lovely location, and I actually stumbled into an event that was being held there for her in celebration of this pop-up. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize that there was an event going on, but the PR agency couldn't have been lovelier. They were like, no, 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 come in, come in. I was like, I'm, I run a YouTube channel and I'm, I'm a blogger, if that helps, I don't know. And they were like, no, it's totally fine. They were so nice about it. And um, I didn't expect to meet Nicola, but I, I ended up meeting her and um, having a nice little conversation with her. She was very lovely and gracious. And um, yeah, I was finally able to snag a couple of the pieces from her jewelry collection that I have been lusting over. So I thought I would unbox them with you so that you could see for yourself just how lovely some of these pieces are. I mean, obviously you saw some of the footage from the event, but I am so excited about these. And these are pieces, I just find her, her design so elegant and sophisticated. Like it just makes you feel like they embody what it is to be like ladylike. And I just, I love it. And I love her branding as well. Um, 
it's just like a light blue and this beautiful like cursive handwriting Nicola Bathy. And then I ended up going with, I don't know the proper name for these actually, I didn't, haven't looked them up on her website quite yet, but they'll be linked down below as always. All right, so the first pair that I got, I'm gonna insert some cutaways here so you can kind of get a closer look um, at them, but they are a drop pearl earring with these beautiful like diamond encrusted flowers and I just thought that they were so classic and just classy and beautiful and I thought that they would be absolutely stunning for a really nice special occasion um, and just yeah I, I really am aiming over the last few years to create um, a wardrobe that is quite classic and timeless. I mean, obviously not every day am I like looking super classy and classic, you know, like I'm, I can be quite casual as well. Like I love to be comfortable, like as you saw this morning with my, you know, Pilates outfit, but I do feel like when I do get dressed up or when I do put an outfit together, that is what I want to, um, to showcase because that is what I feel on the inside and I want that to be um, kind of what is expressed outwardly as well so um, I just thought that these were absolutely beautiful and a set of earrings that I think would just make such lovely heirlooms as well so all right the next ones that I got I only got two pairs I was really trying to keep it to one but I had a hard time doing that but um, anyways these are the ones that I remember seeing and being like I love those those are so beautiful and again they would just make such beautiful um, earrings to wear on a special occasion and just quite timeless and um, again just would make beautiful heirloom pieces to pass down to um, your loved ones later on in life. In addition I also love the blue color because it's um, the color of like sapphire. I don't know if these are actually sapphire. I don't think so. I think these, these would, been a, would have been a lot more expensive <laughs> but anyways I love blue sapphire um, and that is Louis birthstone so I feel like these would always make me um, think of Louis as well. So yeah, love, love, love this pair and um, I will leave these linked down below so you can kind of take a look at those but also um, the other beautiful items that she has on her website. I will definitely be adding to this collection because um, yeah, she definitely has a lot, a lot of other pieces that I have my eye on. The other thing that I grabbed while I was in um, the shop or at the event was this beautiful book called Return to Pretty. And this was written by Caitlin Wilson. She's an interior designer. Also, is she based in Texas? Yes. Yeah, so she lives in Dallas. I can, I can so see that. And um, she lived in London for a good number of years, um, years ago. And she's just really inspired by very pretty interiors. You can see very English traditional um, influence, but then also um, like Baroque French um, influence as well, very clean, um, very crisp, lots of blues and pinks, and I feel like in that way it's, it's quite um, untraditional because I don't feel like a, um, I don't feel like, I feel like right now it's very, um, what's trendy in interior design is very much the opposite of what she really excels in and what she really leans into as her um, talent within the in interior design industry. So I really, really love this book. I saw that she had launched it on Instagram. I followed her for years. She's absolutely stunning. Um, but then also her designs are just so beautiful. You can see like her interiors are, um, I think in the book when I was looking through it last night, it's like a, it's kind of classified as like new traditional and um, quite um, preppy um, and yeah, also timeless and sophisticated and um, so, so beautiful. Like, look how stunning she is. Just beautiful. So this is a lovely book that I am so excited to add to my collection. Um, I've got um, a lot of kind of, you know, neutral like whites and creams and um, browns downstairs in our lounge, but then I also have pops of blue um, and I've been looking for more books with um, a few more pops of blue to kind of bring just a little bit round out everything to where it really does mix um, and is like kind of tied together really well but overall I had a lovely day yesterday thank you so much for letting me kind of share all of the the lovely things that happened yesterday with you and what I um, ended up getting um, I feel like that was kind of a very um, long-winded little segment I always I'm a little bit insecure about how chatty I am on YouTube I always ha I always send Janelle um, my lovely um, video editor a message I'm like I'm so sorry I talk so much <laughs> 
Um, I think she listens, she like watches vlogs that are like 20 minutes long. I'm like, how can people do vlogs in 20 minutes? I just couldn't, I just feel like that's so hard for me. Um, so at the end of the day, I just have to do what feels right for me. And I just love chatting and I love sharing with you guys. And, um, and yeah, so hopefully, you know, the right people will, you know, join, join me here. And, um, I just have to kind of believe in that. I know vlogging isn't really like the best strategy for growing a YouTube channel, but it's just as, as somebody who was a blogger back in like 2013 and, um, all of that, I just kind of feel like I have an, a love and appreciation for what I would consider like long form content, um, where I can kind of like share as much as I want and then put it out there and be done with it for a while. Whereas like Instagram, I feel like is what I think the industry tries to make you feel is like what you need to put all of your time and effort and energy into and share on. Um, but for me, it, it just feels like when I do that, I'm like running in place at the same time and it's so exhausting. And I, I feel like, you know, in 2019 when I was like, I really want to switch how I share myself. I don't want to do it all the time on stories. I want it to be, you know, in a video format, but something similar to a long form blog post where I can create it, like share what I want to share and be excited about it, put it together and then put it out there and then go and like live my life. You know, I just feel like they're, um, I get to connect through comments and things, but I can also put it away. Whereas I feel like because my phone is always in my hand, there's just this impossible impossibility, um, that I feel, um, when it comes to sharing on there all the time, I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's impossible for me to switch off. Um, so yeah, another little ramble sesh there for you, but all that to say, I appreciate you if you are here watching my vlogs, um, because it's definitely not something that I'm doing, um, because I know it's going to like, you know, take off and like make me loads of money. Lord knows, like, you know, I haven't made any, really any money on any of these videos and I, I put money into them myself. Um, I'm doing it because I truly enjoy sharing here. So thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed the videos so far, there are more to come. Um, but now I need to get going. I need to go get my nails done before I go get Louie. And then I need to check in with John Martin because I need to see, um, what we're doing tonight for dinner or if we're going to go out and enjoy the sunshine, um, at our local pub. So anyway, I will catch you guys in a little bit. Actually, before I go, I will just share this dress with you guys. If you missed it, I did an H&M try on haul with all of my recent H&M purchases. Um, and I will link that here if you missed it. There are a lot of really great affordable basics for your summer wardrobe in that video, but this is one of them, and I just love the overall silhouette. I actually didn't think I was gonna like, like this cinching here, but I actually think it's quite flattering um, and really, really nice. Um, so it's just a blue floral um, smocked bodice, little ruffle detail here on the top, um, and then a midi length dress very affordable and really lightweight and super comfortable. So it's a really um, beautiful silhouette in my opinion. So I will leave this linked in the description box. Um, and I'll also link the H&M video in the description box as well if you want to see it. Enjoying the sunshine. Oh, yeah, chips. Beautiful morning. Look at this handsome baby. You're so sweet, chips. Hi, guys. Hope you're doing well. It is now the weekend. It's like our long weekend this weekend. For those of you in the U.S., um, you're enjoying Memorial Day weekend as I'm filming this, and we are enjoying a long bank holiday weekend here in the UK. So um, we are very much doing that. As you can see from those clips, we've just had really leisurely mornings enjoying the sun. I was just like, sun, please like give me all of your vitamin D. It just felt so nice to just sit and let the sun just kind of like drench my face with warmth. It was amazing. Louis just loving um, being outside on his little, um, like watering table and we've got him this little bench thing. I don't know if it's actually in those clips that you guys saw from this weekend, but um, cause we only just put it together. But anyways, um, so that's been fun for him, but 
yeah, just a really nice kind of wholesome family weekend. Had a lot of like walks around town and we went to the park and had a little picnic and and yeah, so, but Louie's napping at the moment. So I thought I would quickly jump on um, and share a couple things that I recently got from Mango um, because I haven't been on Mango's website in a while. I tend to only really look on their website in the autumn winter season because I just historically know that they have so many great pieces um, whether it's, you know, really good wool coats or wrap coats, um, uh, you know, cashmere or wool blend, um, jumpers or sweaters. And so, um, I tend to like always kind of gravitate towards their website in, um, the colder months, but went on there the other day and I didn't, I didn't find too many things that I was like, you know, really, um, drawn to, but there is something that I'm seeing a lot of right now, and these are pieces that I wouldn't necessarily say are a trend, um, but maybe I'm just noticing them more because I feel like you see these on retailers' websites, like one or two every every season or you know spring, summer, fall, winter. They're very classic, and I don't know why I've never really been drawn to them before, but um, yeah, I'm like really, really keen to sport this particular piece a lot more and they're basically crew neck tweed cardigans and i just like was thinking oh my god i think it's because i've been you know going out a lot more and it's still quite chilly um like in the mornings or i need something that is going to be a good layer that isn't a wool coat um so i feel like i'm in that um i'm just trying to figure out like okay what do what would I wear as a part of my style if I'm going to you know an event but I don't want to wear a coat because it's not quite coat time it's not quite appropriate to wear a coat um, but yeah I, I feel like you kind of know where I'm going with this so um, so yeah I just kind of want a nice layer that isn't too much to like carry if I'm going to take it off but still looks quite like classic and put together if I wear it with like a nice dress or something like that. So I found a couple from Mango that I really, really like, so I'll share them with you now, but they are both quite lovely. Um, this one in the States is still available, and I'm pretty sure every color it comes in, I think it comes in six or seven colors. There's like, I think a white, a black, a green. It's kind of like a limey green. Um, this really pretty blue, and then like a purpley color anyway look on the website um it's all linked down the, in the description box but in the uk sizes and colors are picked over i think i got like one of the last of this blue color but if you're in the states you have a lot more choice um but i just love these beautiful buttons i mean mango is not always like the highest of highest quality i'm i'm pretty sure that there's a good portion of this that is like acrylic which i don't love um, but I didn't want to invest too much in this style as it's not something that I wear um, or that I've had a lot in the past. So I want to see how much I wear this um, before I go for like something that's a little bit more that's made of like higher quality materials. So anyways, I just think this will look really pretty with a like nice collared button up shirt or a like nice kind of thin um, white blouse underneath and some nice tailored white trousers or even wide leg trousers um so overall i just love this and i love this blue color a lot um so love that one um it just reminds me of like jackie o and who doesn't like look think about jackie o and be like mm, what a class act what a lady so anyway <laughs> i also love this one it's um a more like ivory and black combo black and white which will be really great no matter what season we're in. Um, I think this will um, be something that I would love to um, incorporate into my fall and winter wardrobe as well. Uh, I love these little kind of pearl and like the faux pearl, <laughs> faux pearl and faux diamond little buttons. Um, just really cute and classic overall. So um, it's also this one is also really, really, um, like it feels like a sweater, even though it has the look of tweed. Um, so I like that a lot because um, it'll definitely give me some more this one is more of like a jacket um, And it has like a lining on the inside um, So yeah, those are the two that I've 
purchased. I know J. Crew has a couple. Um, I will put together a little edit of um, some options if maybe your size is sold out in these two. Um, or maybe you're wanting some other options to choose from and it'll be linked down below It'll also be linked in the LTK app as always um, if you don't follow me on LTK It's a shopping app and I have a profile um, That is under the same name as my Instagram Allison underscore Haley. It's linked in the description box so you can see as well um, Okay, next up is a I have an affinity for like bright royal blue But then I end up buying it like these pieces and then I never end up wearing them so I'm always a bit like okay be real with yourself Haley like when I'm in that like return period I'm like should I return this or should I keep it I'm I'm feeling a little bit like I actually haven't even tried this on yet but I'm kind of feeling like this top fit might be a little bit too much it has like a ruffle um, like a bust area here at the top which could be quite flattering on on people but um but yeah i shouldn't really weigh in until i try it on and then it's a more of a maxi length dress and because i have um a wedding next month and um there's like a, a pre-drinks um or like a welcome dinner um the day before i'm kind of looking for dresses that could work for the the welcome drinks so anyways, that is a contender and I will link that down below. Um, I will let you know if I ended up <laughs> ended up deciding to keep it, but let me know in the, in the comments below based on the little try-on that I inserted on the screen if you think I should keep or return. Um, I did also just get a huge order from And Other Stories. Um, while I didn't do that much damage at Mango, I definitely went a little crazy. At and other stories and and other stories is another one of those retailers no matter where you are in the US or the UK because I know I'm I know I'm, I probably am a bit of a confusing influencer to follow because I'm from the States so you're probably like oh she's from the States all of her stuff is gonna be American and like US based but I live in in the UK so I am a little bit limited in um, what I can feature but I do try my very best to um, feature things that everyone can shop um, because I do travel back to the States here and there, there might be some pieces from like Nordstrom and Shop Up and stuff that are a little bit harder to get if you're in the UK, which I do apologize for. But by and large, I shop at tons of retailers that are um, easy to shop at, regardless of where you live. So um, everything is linked down in the description box. And I don't have time um, to go through the And Other Stories try on with you guys, but I'm thinking because it's such a large order, I might do what I did for the H&M um, order and just make that its own video this week. But yeah, I hope you guys liked that little mini try on and stay tuned for the um, And Other Stories try on. I will do my very best to get it to you by the end of this weekend, fingers crossed. I was able to film it and get it turned over um, with my editor um, quickly for you guys before we leave for Cornwall, fingers crossed. So hopefully uh, Sunday it'll be up for you guys. <laughs> so literally right after I finished um, filming the mango try on clips that you saw in that last little segment, um, Louis woke up from his nap, which means he definitely did not sleep his normal two hours, but it's always the way, isn't it? I was so excited to sit outside with a glass of wine, but that's okay. Um, I wanted to quickly follow up on um, just the non-alcoholic um, wine topic. If you are looking for more uh, non-alcoholic options this summer, this is the one that I tried. It's, um, yeah, Val Formosa, 0.0%. It's just a sparkling alcohol-free wine. Um, and I mentioned this on Instagram. Um, and I also think I said something about it when we were coming back from Italy. Because I think I had had like an, um, a Peroni Zero or something like that. I got a lot of um, feedback on it. Like saying like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm trying to drink less alcohol too. Or why are you drinking like non-alcoholic, you know, no judgment, just curious. And then I've also gotten some like, are you pregnant? Um, so anyways, there's really no big like massive reason like nothing like happened or anything but um, I think it's just after having Louie and um, Like whenever we're out and we have him with us like John and I every so often We'll get a babysitter for us to go out to dinner and have a nice evening just he and I because that's important But we can't do that like often. It's just not financially. It's not something that we can do often so um 
you know, on Fridays what we'll do is we'll get Louis, he, we pick him up at 5.30, and then we'll go to our local pub, which is a very family-friendly environment. I think in the States you kind of think of a bar as like a, like a bar you wouldn't take your kids to, um, but a pub is different. It's um, here, it's just um, a lot more like family oriented. So anyways, we take Louis and we have like, you know, crafts and activities for him to do. Um, but it's like a neighborhood pub and we know people that go there and like there are our neighbors and people that have become friends. And so we end up staying sometimes for a glass or two. And after two glasses, I'm like, whoo, okay, that was a lot. And for me, and um, you know, I just kind of feel like I also, I just always want to make sure I'm like on my best, like, um, I just want to make sure I'm all good because you just never know what could happen like in the middle of the night if he was unwell or something or I don't know. I think that I get like um, a little bit excited and happy to be like chat because I can be really like, <laughs> I don't know if you guys noticed, but I can be quite chatty and I really enjoy like connecting with others. That's like one of my, it's just something that in, in innately within me brings me joy. And so I love connecting with others. I love getting to know like our neighbors and people like that we see every week here. Um, so I think that for me, I'm just like, okay, like I want to still be able to do that um, while I'm also doing a good job of like upholding my responsibility as a mother. And this is, that's not me like thinking anything negatively on anyone that, you know, goes out with their kids and has a few drinks. like. I, I've been there, me and John have both been there, you know, we're trying to make sure that we're just doing a good job and I just know my tolerance is probably not very high and I don't necessarily want to drink super often and a lot to get my tolerance up, you know? So anyway, that's just kind of where my head's at. I'm like, okay, I like, I like Peroni Zero or like Heineken Zero, but I don't always want beer. I like, I usually drink wine, so I'm just looking for some good um, non-alcoholic wine options so that I can feel like I'm a part of, you know, the fun without, you know, getting something that's obvious that people are like, oh, why aren't you drinking? Is everything okay? <laughs> you know, I feel like people think it's so bizarre if you're not like drinking alcohol, but um, yeah, I, I think I just, it doesn't need to have alcohol in it for me to enjoy myself. I just like the feeling of like having a glass of what looks like wine, you know what I mean? So anyway, that's kind of like where I'm at and um, I'm actually really excited. I feel like it's like a, a fun challenge to go on to find um, options that I like. So um, there's a place in Covent Garden that somebody told me about that has all non-alcoholic um, like spirits and beer and wine. So I'm gonna go there soon. I'll probably bring you guys along when I do and see what I can find and try out. And I'll report back because I've gotten, anytime I've, no, I've mentioned it, I've gotten I've gotten some interesting feedback. I feel like it's something that a lot of people are wanting to incorporate more and they don't want to feel like bogged down by the drinks that they've had the night before, you know? So I'm right there with you and I, um, I wanna have a good time, but I don't really feel like I like need the alcohol, but I would appreciate something that like looks like it. You know what I mean? So anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, but I think this is where I'm going to say goodbye. I think this has been a long enough vlog, but I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, yeah, be sure to tune in to my uh, next one to see what I get up to this week. We're heading off to Cornwall next weekend, so I'm sure I'll try my best to um, bring you guys along. But otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a comment below. I would love to hear from you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.